In this video I wanted to share a few tips I learned on battery chargers and these little power adapters. I get quite a few people that bring these in wanting to know if I can give them a replacement or they don't have the original and they want to know if I can give them a replacement. Sometimes all the information they have is that they need a 12 volt power adapter or a 9 volt or whatever it happens to be. And I have to let them know that it's very critical that they tell me exactly what the current is on the transformer because it's going to be powering a certain size load and if your load requires more current than the transformer can deliver you can burn up your transformer and if the load isn't sufficient in other words if it doesn't draw much current the voltage of the transformer might go up too high I'll explain a little bit more about what I mean here if you take a look at this particular transformer you'll notice that it says it's uh, at 9 volts at 100 milliamps now if I was to plug this in right now which I'm going to do and we look at the uh, voltmeter here you'll notice that the voltage is going up to 14 volts now even though it says 9 volts on the transformer that's only because it doesn't have a load on it now if I hook this resistor up here this resistor is about a 100 ohm resistor and I'm drawing well not quite 100 milliamps you can see it creates a voltage drop now I've got 9.23 volts and so this is just showing how that some of these unregulated transformers depend on a certain size load, a certain resistance of the load to achieve the, the voltage drop you need to, to power the device. Now it's not so critical if you've got a, a, uh, a power adapter like this that's regulated. This particular one puts out about 4.7 to 5 volts and it doesn't matter what size load I put on it or it should say it doesn't matter how light of a load I put on it because if I put too too heavy of a load naturally it's going to create a voltage drop but if I have too light of a load let's say I'm hooking it to something that only uses you know a, a hundredth of an amper it's not going to cause the voltage to go too high because it's regulated so that's why I you know prefer a regulated charger in fact um, it's especially important if you're dealing with one of these uh, one of these charging bays here like I've got uh, oh I've got a few of these in the shop here one for this little walkie-talkie and one for my uh, cordless screwdriver here or cordless drill rather and I'm real fond of this particular one because not not only does it have a light on it that tells me when the battery's charged but it also turns off the current going into the battery as soon as it senses that it's charged unless of course the battery's weak or damaged in which case it won't know that it's charged it might keep trying to charge it I've seen that happen many times and it will end up damaging the charger whereas something like a a, uh, a cheaper charger like this you may have this thing sitting in the bay for oh a month perhaps and you put your hand on it you'll feel that it's still warm me indicating that it has no regulation in it to tell it when to shut down after the unit's been charged up so I much prefer you know a, what I call a smart charger something that knows how to shut down when it when it uh, senses a battery charge versus one of these cheaper chargers that just seems to keep charging and charging the other important thing to know is the polarity of the power adapter a lot of times the uh, manufacturer of the, of the device you're trying to power will show a little schematic on the side next to the port where your power adapter plugs in it'll show you the polarity and it'll for example this one the, the positive is in the center and the negatives on the outside so this would be the negative on the outside here in this case and this would be positive in the center but that's not always going to be the case sometimes they switch this around and if you don't have the polarity right that can get you in lots of trouble too it can damage your transformer and or the device you're trying to power so you always want to make sure you get the right polarity now what a other thing I wanted to say about these chargers is that uh, some of the chargers I've tested over the years <clears throat> will appear to be dead just because they don't actually have the battery hooked up to them. I, in fact, I had a gentleman bring me a uh, golf cart charger and I took my meter, hooked it up to the output, and there was nothing coming out of it. And I come to find out that particular charger had to sense a load before it would put anything out. And in fact, it had to, the batteries you're trying to charge had to have a little bit of power in them before the charger would even allow itself to come on. 
to continue charging the battery. So that, that one almost got me in some trouble there. You could easily misdiagnose something. And I think I've seen that on some drill chargers too, where you might take your meter and put it to the output tabs thinking, you know, you're going to measure some voltage. And in some cases, you might find that there's nothing there. It has to see the battery uh, as a load before it will begin to charge. So just for the fun of it, I took apart these two chargers so you could see the difference in construction. This is the uh, Craftsman charger right here, the one I'm fond of. And you can see it's got quite a bit of circuitry in there to taper out the current when it senses a battery is charged. In fact, uh, I could have this thing, the battery sitting in the charging bay for a week at a time and put my hand on the battery and it, it won't be warm. Whereas uh, this other cheaper charger here, I can put my hand on the battery after a, you know, a month and that battery will still be warm because this thing is constantly delivering uh, 200 milliamps to my battery. That kind of surprised me. Now this does have some regulation circuitry in it, but just not much. In fact, this is a 6 volt transformer here and I notice without any kind of a load, in this case the load being the battery, it goes up to about 13 volts. Here's a uh, real sophisticated circuitry here. It's a charge controller for a solar panel system. So that, that allows you to leave the solar panel on your battery continuously without overcharging your battery. And uh, a lot of these allow you to adjust the voltage uh, within certain parameters to your own liking. So you can see there's quite a bit of difference in the circuitry between this or this as compared with a, a cheaper charger like this. So if you're, if you're looking to buying one of these uh, drill chargers and you can afford to buy one that has a more sophisticated charger it could be worth your money and prolong the life of your battery. Now I troubleshoot these from time to time and I usually don't go too far out on them because of the time involved but a lot of times when they're brought in here I'll find sometimes they're simple things open fuses or resistors that go up in smoke or diodes and uh, a lot of times they go bad because the batteries get old and the charger ends up having to overwork itself trying to keep the battery charged. That's also true with alternators as well on, on your car. Um, a lot of times somebody will leave their lights, headlights on in a grocery store parking lot. Somebody will give them a jump start and the person drives away thinking everything's fine. They don't realize that their alternator is never designed to work that hard to have to top off that battery and uh, consequently they end up damaging the alternator. It's fairly common. So if you're ever in a situation like that and you leave your headlights on, once you get home, uh, throw a battery charger on that battery and let it charge up. You'll be better off in the long run. Sure, you may get away with it if you got a real strong alternator, but then again, you might not. Anyway, just thought I'd make a quick video on these chargers and whatnot. Hope you find the information helpful. Thanks for watching, and if you like the video, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up.